All right, guys, Tosh coming at you. Tuesday, May the 9th, and we're at T minus 131, and uh, surrounded by freshly painted parts, which is a good thing. So, first thing I need to do today is uh, take these parts off the clotheslines and store them away safely, uh, probably in the trailer. So, we're going to do that first, and then we'll. Uh, figure out what we want to do next. I'm thinking that um, they may want to actually pull the bushings out of the trailing arms and get those ready to be uh, sandblasted or media blasted. So that's one job I need to do. And I started thinking about uh, possibly getting into uh, getting the transmission off the engine and possibly getting into the engine disassembly since that will need some um, probably machine work. I'll need to obviously order some parts once I get it apart. So there's a bit of a lead time involved on uh, on the engine uh, side of things. So we may decide to go ahead and pull that apart and order parts as necessary. And because uh, obviously we're going to have to wait for those to arrive over a period of time, we'll have to probably get the block up to a machine shop to get it uh, boiled out or dipped, or whatever. So uh, we may decide we want to do that sooner than later. Anyway, I'm still thinking on that part, but I know I've definitely got to get the uh, bushings out of these trailing arms. So we'll probably end up doing those first after we remove those parts. All right, guys, so we've got the uh, garage cleaned up a bit and we've got all the parts stowed away safely in the trailer. So we're moving on to the trailer, trailing arms as promised. So what we want to do is we want to remove these brackets and the uh, bushings from these trailing arms. And then we're going to try to clean them up a bit. I started a little bit with a brass wire brush, a wire wheel and uh, you can see it's coming up a little bit better already. Looks like it's been painted with black paint and I've uh, been starting to strip that off a little bit. Looks like you may have some undercoating on here as well so we'll get to the bottom of this and we'll get it cleaned up as best we can. Uh, we may be able to clean this up by hand without having to take it to the blasters. We shall see how good it comes up. Um, I haven't decided on how I'm going to refinish this anyway, whether I'm going to you know, paint it with aluminum paint or silver pour 15 or whether we're just going to clear coat it. So I haven't made my mind up on that yet. We'll see how they, uh, they finish up before I decide what coating I want to apply to them. Anyway, so that's where we're at. We'll come back. All right, guys, the uh, trailing arm brackets are off. So we're uh, doing the same drill with Pitman arm puller on these uh, bushings. So I don't know if you want to watch or not, but... Uh, I'm going to give you a little wider angle on this guy. One-handed. Pretty exciting, huh? Anyway, it's a pretty easy uh, method of removing these bushings if you do happen to have this tool handy. Like I said, there's lots of ways to do this, including a threaded rod. I just happen to have this tool, so it works well for pretty much any size bushing that you might have where you've got a bit of an, a lip that you can grab onto on the one side. And then we're almost out. And the tool is almost going to fall off. A little bit more. Real time bushing removal. Even better if I had my right hand on the wrench since I'm not left handed okay we're just gonna pull that out by hand now I think there you go actually not in that bad of shape So it's my understanding that these uh, trailing arms were originally uh, sand cast. So when you pull the plugs out, you can see I've got the plugs out here. 
And if the plugs have never been out before, which I doubt these have been, there's usually a pretty big amount of sand still left in these. Probably sand and probably some, uh, you know, de degradation of the aluminum, that kind of stuff. So let's tip it up and see what we get. Ready for this? Should probably have a mask on. So there's usually quite a bit of stuff left in these trailing arms, so in there for 50 years. 50 year old dirt. So this is the uh, remnants of a rubber bump stop that's uh, come off long ago. And sometimes these uh, get really locked into uh, the trailing arm threads here. So uh, we're gonna try to get that out. A pair of vice grips or a pair of channel locks on that and uh, we may have to resort to some heat if that doesn't want to come out. We shall see. Well, it definitely wasn't come off without some heat. We got the first one done. We're just working on the second one. We definitely got to heat these guys up. Hopefully this one comes out as well as the first one did. Okay, well, we'll bring you back. Well, unfortunately not so lucky on the second. You can see we draw a uh, broke that stud off inside the trailing arm. So we're gonna have to drill that out and get an easy out for it. So uh, a little bit more work to do on this one, unfortunately, but uh, that's the way it goes sometimes. All right, guys, I accomplished what I wanted to do tonight. So uh, I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna call it an early night and uh, get some work done inside the house for a change. Um, so we'll leave it there. Um, I'm thinking that I may attempt to clean these up uh, a little bit with um, I've got some 3M fiber discs uh, Rolock fiber discs so I think that might work well on this so I'm gonna try that and see if that uh, strips this without damaging it uh, too much so uh, maybe we'll get out here and we'll uh, try that tomorrow alright guys that's it for tonight see you tomorrow hey evening guys kind of an appropriate song on the uh, radio no time left for you by the guess who Wednesday, May the 10th, it's just uh, coming up to 8.30, a little late start in the garage. Today was the uh, first gr uh, lawn cutting of the season, so uh, that didn't go so well. <laughs> uh, lawnmower made it through about half the lawn before it gave up the ghost, so we're in the market for a new lawnmower. Anyway, uh, what day are we? Uh, Wednesday, the 10th of May, and we're at T-130. And my sole purpose in the garage tonight is to uh, drill out this broken bolt that's in the aluminum trailing arm. So uh, we're going to get the drill out and uh, see what we can do. Um, see how difficult that's going to be. I'm hoping it's going to be easy, but we shall see. Anyway, we'll come back later. So as Hannibal would say from the A-Team, I love it when a plan comes together. So that is now rectified. We've got that bump stop all fixed up. So all that's tapped out and ready to go with a new bump stop. So I'll call that a success for tonight. Now we can sleep tonight. All right guys, we got the uh, engine and tranny on this side of the garage, so we're thinking about uh, starting to work on this and uh, that means that I need to uh, remove the transmission first, uh, which will entail me getting the engine stand out from over there, which is kind of packed away at the moment. So I don't feel like doing that tonight. I'm feeling kind of lazy tonight, so uh, I expended all my effort in getting this engine over on this side of the garage. So I think what we'll do is uh, we'll call it a night and then we'll start fresh tomorrow. We'll bring the engine hoist over, hook it up, lift the engine up to get the uh, transmission off and then we'll think about uh, removing some other components, the flywheel, etc., the clutch, um, in order to get this mounted to an engine stand. 
So, that's what's happening in this garage. Have a good night, guys. See you tomorrow. All right, guys, I lied. I'm not going in yet. It's only 9.10, so I figured I could go ahead and do a few things at least without involving the engine crane. So, I think what we'll do is we'll take that um, rocker shaft off and uh, we'll uh, probably loosen the head bolts off because I know this head's going to be a pain to get off. So, we may as well start working on that. We'll just uh, have a seat in a milk crate and work uh, nice and slow. And uh, we'll remove that rocker shaft and all the pedestals safely and we'll put it in a safe location and uh, that'll be it for tonight. Alright guys, the uh, rocker shaft is off. We've just got it sitting over here inside the uh, valve cover and we're now in the process of removing the push rods and we've got a little boxer with our uh, numbers front of the engine there. So we're going to start with number one, pull that, put it in the box, keep it in its orientation and we'll do the same with the lifters when we pull them out once we get the uh, head off. Alright guys, quick update for you. So we've got all the head nuts off and we managed to get out uh, most of the studs on the outside except for one. They actually looked really good. Not a spot of rust on them anywhere. Don't know if they had any C's on them or what, but I've never seen studs come out like this so easy. And believe it or not, I just for fun thought I'd go get the rubber mallet and give the head a couple wax and see if it was actually moving and I believe I can actually get this off like within the next five minutes or so which will be incredible I've struggled with I don't know how many countless TR6 heads getting them off and this looks like it you know, I don't want to jinx myself here but this looks like it might be the easiest one ever so let's see what we can do here in the next five minutes alright guys unbelievably the head is off it's only 10.15, didn't have to struggle too much. From what I can see on a very brief first inspection, it actually looks pretty good. So, uh, nothing looks catastrophic, which is good. No ridge, which is good. Here's the head over here. So, a little bit of carbon built up on there. But you got to remember this car was running triple Webers. And triple Webers don't like to idle very much and that's pretty much all this car has done over the last uh, number of years. So uh, yeah, I, I expect a little bit of uh, carbon to be built up in there. It needs to have a good run and uh, blow all that stuff out of there. So anyway, I thought I'd just give you a quick look at that. Happy about that. It didn't uh, put up too much of a fight, which I was really worried about. I was thinking I was going to have to suspend it from my engine crane. Uh, you know, and try to pull the head off that way from a couple of the uh, pedestal studs. But uh, it worked out okay. A little uh, persuasion with a rubber mallet, and I mean very little persuasion. And uh, it's off, so I'm happy. Uh, so we'll definitely go in now. We'll bag up some parts, uh, some fasteners, and some studs, etc. Just to make sure we don't get anything lost. And then we'll go in for the night. Alright guys, that's it for tonight. We'll get back out here tomorrow. Hey, good evening guys. Tush coming at you from the Tush Mahal. It's uh, Wednesday, May the 11th, and we're at T-129. And as you can see, we're back uh, playing around with the engine from the uh, TR250. Still have the transmission mated to it, and we're going to rectify that shortly, I hope. Here's the uh, number for anybody that's interested. So, uh, I think what we're going to do uh, tonight, or what the plan is for tonight, is we're going to remove those studs. That's one of the things I like to do. I do have a stud remover down there that we're going to utilize. Uh, I do work, all the tappets are still in the block, so uh, I want to remove the tappets and store those away safely. Um, so we'll pull those out and uh, got an old egg carton here to store those in. So we'll get to that shortly. And then what I think I'll do is, uh, as mentioned yesterday, I think we'll uh, pull the old uh, shop crane out and we'll lift the engine and remove the transmission. And then we'll think about uh, trying to get this mounted onto a stand at some point. So stay tuned. All right, guys, quick update for you. The uh, studs are now out as well as the tappets. And uh, just a report on the tappets, they all looked absolutely fantastic. 1 through 11, and then they came up to number 12, which really bites. Anyway, it's not horrible, but it is pitted. 
and the edges are starting to degrade a little bit so uh, that's not good so we'll have a look at the cam when we get to it so I'm not sure what that's caused by it could be a bad spring could be the valves were uh, not adjusted properly anyway uh, unfortunately that's the very last one I pulled out the rest of them I'll give you a quick look at them or one of them at least are mint so I mean that's just perfect so unfortunately just that one bad tap it but that might mean that I need to get a full brand new set of tappets and who knows could lead to a uh, a new cam as well but we'll wait and see what that cam lobe looks like once we get to it anyway that's it for now I think what we're gonna do is uh, probably it's time to get the engine hoist and uh, we'll get to removing this transmission all right guys the uh, trans is just hanging there on those top studs just about ready to come out so uh, gonna get some energy up and we're gonna lift this uh, big heavy piece out of here and uh, stick it on the floor here on this uh, rubber matting so hopefully it'll come out fairly easy so we'll give her a shot all right Alright guys, I think we're going to call it a night. I'm uh, starting to get pretty tired and uh, don't really want to continue on to uh, I got to remove the flywheel and the clutch assembly. Got to drain the oil still. Um, I don't really feel like doing that at the moment so uh, I think it's time to go in. So we'll get out here tomorrow and we'll get that clutch off and the flywheel off and drain the oil and then tomorrow will be the day we get it on the engine stand. So anyway, I think we accomplished what we wanted to get done tonight. We did uh, remove the studs and the tappets and we got the tranny unbolted. So I think that's pretty good for the night. Anyway, we'll get out here tomorrow and uh, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching. Hey, good evening guys. Tesh coming at you. It's Friday, May the 12th and we're at T-128. Just about 8 o'clock in the garage, so a little bit of a late start. But the important thing is that we're starting tonight at least. So back on... Uh, the motor and the objective for tonight as I mentioned yesterday is to get the clutch and the flywheel off and to get this uh, engine mounted on a stand so I don't know how far we'll get tonight we'll see how we do we had a long day at work and we we're a little tired but we uh, we're gonna play around a little bit anyway so uh, I did notice on this uh, clutch assembly these are uh, different fasteners so they're uh, Allen key style so I don't know if they're upgraded aftermarket fasteners but uh, different than I've ever seen so we'll uh, get the Allen keys out and uh, hopefully those will come out okay all right guys we'll get to it all right guys quick update for you uh, clutch and uh, flywheel are off and now we're attacking the uh, rear engine plate uh, we're probably getting to a point where we need to uh, lift the engine up to get that plate off so what we'll probably do is I still haven't drained the oil out so I think what we'll do is we'll lift the engine take that plate off drain the oil and then go from there all right guys it's getting a little bit late so I think we're gonna call the night so uh, pretty much managed to get everything done except get it mounted on the stand and that's because I don't really have the hardware to be able to do that so uh, plus I need to modify my engine stand slightly to uh, be able to bolt on the uh, mount for the engine stand so we'll play around with that tomorrow uh, morning when we get out here and uh, we'll see if we can adapt that to the stand as I recall the last time I did an engine I actually uh, didn't remove the crank so uh, I was able to keep the uh, back plate on and that gave me some more options as far as uh, 
putting the engine on the stand. So anyway, we'll figure it out tomorrow and uh, we will see you then.